Look, if you had one shot or one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted in one moment, would you capture it or just let it slip? Yo. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming back for another um, episode, another edition, another video from Kicking It in Korea with Ingrid. Um, so my talking point lately has been my KIPP class where I am learning Korean all over again. Um, my class, my classmates, that's the best way to put it. My classmates are less than stellar right now. However, in an awesome, awesome turn of events, things are looking up. I have some really funny notes, which is why I decided to make a video now rather than to wait. And so it would be like one more class before we hit the 24 hour mark. So I might as well just do it now because these notes are fun. So uh, people, as I've talked about in my last few videos, people are always late or they just don't show up and they don't say anything to anybody or they just leave in the middle of class and don't come back and she's like what what's happening what the heck okay so again she explains color text if you're going to be late that seems to be something that she does every single class why does she do it every class because people aren't doing it obviously um and I don't know if I mentioned this before. No, this is new. These are new notes. So I'm in class and I'm trying to snack healthy throughout the day. So I eat cherry tomatoes while I'm in class. I'm eating cherry tomatoes while we're writing things. There's a dude behind me eating a full on bowl of ramyun. What? How are you just back there? Oh, mm, mm. eating noodles. It, and it wasn't a small, it was like the big bowl of instant ramyun that you can get. That's what he ate in class. And all I could do was shake my head. Like, are you, are you serious? I thought I was in a class of adults with some common sense, but. They prove me wrong every single class. And uh, my favorite, least favorite character in class, Mullet Dude, who we're now going to call Mike the Mullet from now on. So Mike the Mullet strolled in at 11.30. 11.30. Class starts at 9. Lunch is at 1. Who strolls in at 11.30? See, He's not going to progress to the next level, which is a good thing, because the more people that stroll in late every single week, like the Sultans of Brunei, the more hours they miss, they will not progress forward with me. That is awesome. My class keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and it's just the people who are serious who are there to learn, and I love it. Um, I absolutely learned some new words, so that's great. Um... My pronunciation is getting better, I think, but my speaking anxiety is on full blast now because I sit in the front simply because it was the seat that was open when I got there. And this, I would have sat on the other side of class if there was a seat in the front that was open, but there wasn't when I got there. Okay, that's my fault, whatever. We all have our same spots that we sit in over and over and over. So this is where I sit now, which is why it annoys me when someone sits next to me is because that seat is supposed to be empty. That's another reason why I take that seat is so I can spread out the way I like to with my notebook and everything else because that's how I learn best. I have to take notes when I'm learning. The teacher is my partner for speaking exercises uh, and I am fortunately or unfortunately the spotlight more than I'm comfortable with because uh, when it's just she and I, 
my speaking stage fright is at almost 100%, it's going much better, I must say. Um, and also the fact that she's always like, oh, who did she? And she speaks to me. It's forcing me to speak a little louder and a little louder and a little louder every class. It's difficult and I shake when I'm doing it, but I get it done. Um, but there's about two or three of us that sit in the front row. She calls on us um, more frequently because we're in the front, but she calls on me more than anybody and she is always my speaking partner um, when we do any type of a speaking exercise. Um, like I said, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing because I'm so, so nervous when I'm speaking with her, even though I shouldn't be because she's the teacher and the whole point is for me to make mistakes and to be wrong so that she can help me and correct it. Yeah. I went out with my friends yesterday and I ordered my food and my beer myself and they were all like, whoa, really? Yes, I did. And they're like, okay, let's only speak Korean from now on. And my face went like this. They're like, no, 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 you can do it. Let's only speak Korean. And I said, uh, no, 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 <laughs> I can't do it. Let's not only speak Korean, but I'll do my best. How about that? Okay, okay, so it's getting better. Uh, my problem area right now is numbers. I don't, it's because of counting in English. Like we don't necessarily say 1,200, we say 1,200. No, it has to be 1,200. And it just, counting, once I get over 100,000, I'm like, oh, what? How do you say this number? And there's a very specific order and how you say it. And it's not difficult. It's really, really not, but because of my anxiety, I make it more difficult than what it is, and it, it doesn't need to be at all. Um, I will say another really, really awesome thing in class is that as we were going to a break, um, people asked the teacher for help with what we had just covered. So you see more and more people getting serious. And like I said, we're either three or four classes in, I can't remember where, but there are people who have already quit and said that they're not going to study anymore. I mean, that sucks because it helps you with your visa, but maybe now just isn't a good time for you. It doesn't work out and you have to do it at another point in time. That could be. The program will let you do that, which is great. Um, the lady who brought her children to class and had them wait until breaks. Uh, so basically they would sit by themselves for an hour and then she would go spend time with them. Then they sit by themselves for an hour, blah, blah, blah. There's another um, location where she can take classes and they have uh, like a, an area for kids. It's like a community center and uh, she can take her classes there and it's okay to bring your kids because they have another place where your kids can go. So that's really cool. You know, the kit program does what they can for everybody to make sure that you can do this and it's free. All you have to do is buy your book and that's less than 10,000 won. So, like, you can't beat it. It's awesome. Um, I still really, really like my teacher. Like I said, she is always my speaking partner, so I'm doing my best to get over my anxiety, but it is difficult. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to put in this video was my first experience at a gym jobang, or a sauna here. And I went with my friend, my very, very good friend. <laughs> you have to go with a really, really good friend when you go to the sauna. Because unlike in the US where you wear clothes all the time, when you go to the sauna here, they are separated and everybody is butt booty bucket naked, like 100%. There's no half in it. No, you're naked totally naked like the day you were born that's a bit of a culture shock for a westerner you know because you see everybody 
walking around naked. Like they got no care in the world. And they bring their kids in. So there's moms and daughters in there together. And everybody's, you know, just super nude. And in the U.S., if you saw your parents naked, it's an image that's burned in your brain forever. And it scars you for life. And you're like, oh, my God, I can never unsee what I just saw. You might mm, a little bit, you know, throw up in your mouth because it's gross. You just saw your parents naked. Oh, my God. I would never want my children to see me naked. Ew. Ew. Ugh. I don't want to see my kids naked. Like, after I don't have to change their diapers and bathe them anymore, I got no reason to see my kid naked. You know what I mean? Like, what the what? Uh, I don't want to see my sister naked. I don't, no. Like, you just, no. No, 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 no. So it's different because it's just raised differently. It, it was a shock. But at the same time, I was like, you know what? Nobody's body shaming me here. Why am I body shaming myself? Because there were women of all shapes and sizes in there. People of all ages in there, you know? And everybody was just hanging out, relaxing. So that was really cool. They kind of looked like, you know, because I looked different. So they kind of looked. And, you know, with my hair, they were like, Hmm. Hmm. But nothing like, I don't know, there's no ill will at all. Um, and I got a scrub. Let me tell you, that scrub was amazing. It was so amazing. My friend was saying, are you sure you want to get the scrub? Because the water is hot and they scrub so hard. She said, I remember when my mom would scrub me, I would cry. And I said, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the scrub. And I was looking at the menu and I went to Spasis. Yes, Spasis in Incheon. And you can get, I think it's 60,000 won. You get an aromatherapy scrub. Uh, you get a massage and you get your hair washed. 60,000 won, I believe. So I was like, all right, cool, let's do that. Because it's more than 40 minutes. Oh, and a facial, a, a, a kind of facial. And I, yeah, I want to say it's like 60,000 won. And I, this is amazing because to get a, just to get a facial in the U.S., it's going to cost you more than $60 a lot of places. Uh, and if you want to get a massage, a, what, a 30-minute massage might cost you 35 or 40 bucks, if not more. And if you want to go to the salon and just get a shampoo and get your hair dried, that's going to cost you, what, 35 40 50 bucks maybe, depending on where you go. So to be able to get my hair washed, get the face thing, get the scrub, and get a massage and it was like 60 bucks oh my god take my money please take my money the scrub was heaven it was absolutely heavenly it was awesome so awesome cleanest i ever felt in my life and it made me question what i have been doing in the bath and the shower my whole life because this was an amazing feeling i felt so clean it was awesome uh, and then the massage was good. It went fast. And there were times when I wanted to cry during the massage because she got in there with all her elbow. I mean, her she had magical knuckles some kind of way. And she got in there and I was just like, <sighs> okay. There were times when I did contort and whatnot, but I was like, nope, keep going. Do it, do it, go. <sighs> okay. Um, it was just, it's awesome. I would say, don't do the massage if if you are a tender person, and you know somebody does something just a little bit too hard. It's not gonna work out for you. Skip the massage. Maybe even skip the scrub because they they get in there, and I'm pretty sure she's probably my girlfriend now from the way she scrubbed. <laughs> I like, it's a very, very, I mean, she was getting in there, and uh, if she was a dude, she would have teabagged me like five times, I had her boobs on my forehead when she was scrubbing this way, 
and scrubbing, you know, my neck and everything. It was, like I said, it was a very uh, intimate experience, but I am so down to get that scrub like every week, especially in the summertime, because I have never felt so clean. Um, I think I made a video earlier where I said that I switched to wearing natural deodorant just because I don't want all of the aluminum and stuff like that in my body. I got my scrub on Saturday night. Um, I sweat a little bit when I sleep. Just, you know, it happens. I, I sleep really, really hot for some reason, no matter what. And even though I did sweat just a tad in my sleep, normally I would have woke up and been like, wow, that is tart. No smell whatsoever. So I didn't have to take a shower because I had showered and scrubbed Saturday night. So I put on my natural deodorant, went on to class on Sunday. I did perspire a little bit because it was humid when I was walking to class. Uh, still, a no smell. It was great. Took a shower Monday morning and I barely started to smell on Monday. It was amazing. And my whole smell and body chemistry, I feel like, was changed by the scrub. So I am going to do it as often as possible. It was amazing. And I also ate there. I had kimchi jjigae and it was delicious. I had a very, very good time with the spa. I highly recommend it. Um, but again, uh, if you are, <laughs> as my cousin said, very puritanical and you can't be naked in front of other people, then this is not the place for you. Um, don't go with a friend that you are not comfortable being completely nude in front of because that's just how it goes. You know what I mean? Um, but other than that, it was great. It was really, really great. I highly recommend Spasis in Incheon if you are in the area. It was great. And if you know of any other spas that you like even better, please let me know because I want to go to many, many spas now. Uh, I have to figure out who I'm going to go with or I'll just figure it out and go by myself when I'm more comfortable with my Korean. But I really loved it. So uh, that's everything that I had to talk about this time. Sorry this video ran a little long. Um, but as always, please do like, share, subscribe, and leave any comments down below with any questions or comments or anything like that that you may have. And I want to give a shout out to the new subscriber. And again, I'll just put it in the comments. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate it. Have a good evening.